Πηγαίνουμε στην επόμενη ενότητα που είναι The Greek Investment Landscape Attracting International Investors and Funds και μαζί μας έχουμε σαν moderator τον κύριο Αλέξη Δαμαλά, partner της Financial Advisory Leader της Deloitte Greece, ο οποίος θα αναλάβει να συστήσει και τους υπόλοιπους συνομιλητές. Κύριε Δαμαλά, έχετε το λόγο. Ευχαριστώ. Καλησπέρα κύριε Σπιρτούνια. Καλησπέρα σε όλους. Καταρχήν θα ήθελα να πω ότι αυτή η συζήτηση λόγω του αντικειμένου των διεθνών επενδύσεων και τον ξένο φαντ θα την κάνουμε στα αγγλικά, οπότε θα με συγχωρήσετε θα γυρίσω στα αγγλικά από αυτή τη στιγμή. So good afternoon ladies and gentlemen. Uh, on the Greek investment landscape, attractive international investors and funds panel, we have with us to, today uh, four distinct speakers. Mr. Alex Patelis is the chief economic advisor of Prime Minister Mitsotakis and a distinct international uh, economist. Mr. Christos Megalou, CEO of Piraeus Bank, one of the Greek four systemic banks and very experienced investment banker in the past and uh, with significant uh, experience in investment and banking. Mr. Uh, Alex Fotakidis, a partner of CVC, an international private equity fund that has done a number of uh, transactions in Greece in the last few years. And Mr. Dimitris uh, Andriopoulos, founder and CEO of uh, Demand, a real estate developer very active in the, in, in the Greek market the last few years. Now, good afternoon, gentlemen. I hope that you can hear me. Uh, before we start the panel discussion, I would like just to take two, of, two minutes and present to, you, to the panel uh, just two slides and to all the audience. Let me... So we'll uh, present you two slides. The first slide presents, I'm waiting for, okay. So on the first slide, uh, you can see on the left-hand chart, the evolution of the foreign direct investment in Greece for the period 2008 to 2019. Uh, you can observe that uh, the last few years we, can, we have seen an increase on the foreign direct investment Actually, in 2018 and more so in 2019, uh, we surpassed the level of uh, FDI uh, before crisis. Uh, while on the left hand, uh, on the right hand chart, uh, we can see the gross fixed capital uh, formation uh, in Greece over the same period of time. We can see that there is a stabilization in the last few years. However, at significantly lower level than uh, before the pre-recession level. On the next slide, uh, we present uh, the uh, breakdown of the investment. Let me. Oh, the breakdown of the investment in the various uh, sector of the economy, and uh, you can see that the secondary uh, secondary sector is the most uh, was the most attractive, uh, while in the um, uh, in the in the third sector, excuse me, in the third sector, the service sector is the most attractive in the economy, uh, while uh, uh, within the service sector, forex direct investment in financial services, in uh, logistics, tourism and real estate uh, are the, were the more uh, attractive. I will switch now uh, back to, uh, to the panel, and I would like to uh, invite uh, Mr. Patelis, uh, in the panel and I would like to ask the first question. So, Mr. Patelis, I would like to ask you which are the key pieces of legislation that the Greek government enacted the last couple of years that uh, uh, helped and improve, to have to improve the competitiveness of the Greek economy and uh, make the country more attractive for investments? Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon and good morning to everybody uh, listening and watching in. Thank you for this, uh, for the honor to be invited in yet another very successful conference. And uh, uh, thank you very much for the uh, invitation to this panel. So the government was elected in July 2019 and has passed since then uh, over 135 bills through parliament. I had to count them and there's still a lot of them uh, ongoing. It's a little bit difficult to single out which one's the most important one. It's a little bit like asking who's your favorite child, but there has been a lot of reform um, in terms of simplifying uh, investments, simplifying licensing procedures. There was a landmark bill that, would, that was passed about a year ago uh, on licensing, simplifying it, and we're going to have an additional bill in that area come into parliament uh, next month, a very important bill. 
Uh, we have a bill on labor reform coming out uh, in January as well. Um, there's initiatives on uh, spatial planning. There's a new bill on uh, public procurement that is going to uh, enter parliament soon. We have the 5G auction coming up uh, in a few weeks in December and 5G will be operational in early 21. There's the digital transformation of the uh, Greek economy. In particular, the government is being digitized. This is an ongoing process by the Ministry for Digital Reform. Uh, we have the um, end to lignite production by the year 28 and most of the plans by the year 23. Um, we have the new RRF program that will do a lot of uh, training and retraining, skilling and upskilling of the labor force. Um, so there's many, many different uh, initiatives. And of course, we have the continued reduction uh, in the legacy stock of NPEs. Um, the Hercules um, uh, uh, plan has, uh, is on course to reduce NPEs by half. So there's just a lot of stuff going on. And the primary objective of the government continues to be to reform the economy and draw in more investment. You talked about the uh, investment gap, that's the gap we want to plug in and we want to increase FDI even further from where it is at the moment. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Patelis. And uh, having talked also about the uh, reduction of the NPL, I, I would like now to ask uh, Mr. Megalu, uh, what, is, uh, what are the key, uh, the key steps th uh, in the reorganization and transformation plan of the, of the bank and uh, which are the most significant uh, achievement uh, in implementing this plan and uh, the key steps uh, going forward, the key action uh, going forward for the bank. I think we cannot hear Mr. Megalu. Thank you, uh, Mr. Damalas, and thank you, the organizers, for inviting us in uh, this conference. And I would like to thank our distinguished uh, guests that uh, we are co-speakers in this very, very interesting uh, topic. A huge restructuring job for uh, Pareus Bank has taken place the last three years, from 2017 to 2019. Uh, and we are now launching a new transformation plan, which, uh, uh, to give you an idea of the complexity, has 17 initiative things, 120 projects, 100 operational key value drivers. The cornerstone of this, uh, of this project is uh, the NPE de-risking, uh, uh, the uh, capital enhancement, and the third one is the big transformation. On the NPE de-risking, which is uh, a, a, a very big task, we are using the Hercules, uh, uh, the Hercules uh, program, which is uh, a, a very important one in our effort to de-risk uh, uh, the balance sheet of the bank and uh, make it a more uh, lean, efficient, and, and a profitable one. On the capital uh, enhancement plan, we are uh, embarking on a number of innovative transactions that are giving us the opportunity to uh, preserve capital and create uh, new capital through carves out and, uh, and sales of, uh, of, uh, uh, of uh, businesses. And finally, uh, we are in a position to, through our transformation plan, to increase the top line. This is uh, something that uh, is happening as we speak. So in 2020, we're able to have a 4% annual growth uh, on uh, like for like on our top line. Uh, we were able to disburse uh, up to now 5.4 billion euros in financing the Greek economy. Uh, that was as of late November, vis-a-vis -vis a 5 billion euro target for the whole of the year, and uh, have a pretty good uh, uh, data on, uh, on, on actually the quality of our book, which is uh, very, very encouraging. One more word to say uh, on, uh, uh, on, on uh, the capital plan, through the work that we are doing in uh, in actually preserving and creating about 1 billion of capital, we will be in a position 
to uh, de-risk the balance sheet by five to six billion uh, more again through the use of uh, the Hercules program. So all in all, a, a huge uh, uh, transformation for the uh, for the bank, uh, de-risking through MPE deleveraging, capital enhancement through the innovative actions, and uh, basically. Uh, creating bottom line for uh, for for the results that are coming through. Thank you, Mr. Megalu. I understand that uh, there will be also some action that uh, they may attract additional uh, investor on your uh, on your capital base. Uh, with that, I would like now to uh, ask Mr. Fotakidis, uh, CVC partner that uh, has been very active in the Greek market the last few years. Mr. Fotakidis, uh, you have concluded uh, acquisition in the, uh, in the area of health, in the marinas, as well as in the technology sector. I would like to ask you, what is your experience uh, from uh, acquiring, but uh, also from managing uh, these investee companies? Excuse me, I think we have, we cannot hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes, please. Great. Good afternoon, Alexi. Uh, it's a pleasure to be on the panel. Uh, thank you for the question. We've been active in Greece since 2017, and we have invested more than 500 million of equity in, uh, in several projects. Uh, the creation of Hellenic Healthcare Group through several acquisitions in 2017, 18, and 19, a significant partnership investment in Scrooge alongside the founders, the leading e-commerce platform in Greece, and then also marinas, as you mentioned. We acquired the D-Marine Group from Dogush, and D-Marine has three marinas in, in Greece. Hopefully, we can, we can add more. And uh, I think the, it's important to start with, with the backdrop. One of the reasons that we decided to focus on Greece and, and start investing in Greece is we do think there is a supportive macro and political environment. We think that Greece... Uh, other things being equal, should grow faster than most other European countries in the next five to ten years. And we think there are a lot of opportunities uh, where institutional investors such as CBC can come in and can support companies to grow. There's also a supportive uh, banking sector. All the transactions that we have looked at and the ones we have completed, we have, we have done with local banking partners such as Pires Bank. Actually, we announced one last night, uh, the acquisition of the Vartia Group. Um, but also it's important to, um, to look at the, the micro level. And on the micro level, one of the positive surprises we found early on, and this is going back to 2017, is really the wealth of, of the human capital here. And I think it's been discussed in, in other panels early, earlier today. We've been positively surprised with the talent pool that exists in Greece. You know, we've been able to work with local management teams um, who, are, who, are, who are keen to, to have support from institutional investors, who are keen to learn, uh, who are keen to, to go abroad as well and, and be plugged into our global network and learn from experiences in other markets. For example, the, the fantastic team that we have at Hellenic Healthcare Group, we've gone with them to visit hospitals that we, we owned in Spain, in France, in Finland, and they've directed, developed great uh, collaboration, uh, collaborations with, with those groups. Equally with, uh, with the, the management team at Scrooge, one of, the, uh, one of the best management teams I've come across in our entire portfolio of almost 90 companies, we've been able to, to introduce them to other e-commerce players across Europe and host uh, workshops, again, in, in, in the context of best practice sharing. I think that's, that's sort of been a really rewarding exercise, both for ourselves, but also also the, also the teams. Um, so I think generally uh, speaking, I think we have a positive macro political and banking environment. We have a lot of talent already in Greece and I'm seeing a lot of talent coming back to Greece. I think Mr. Patelis has been helpful with all the various uh, initiatives. Uh, we're, seeing, we're seeing increasing CVs come in at the portfolio company level and it's really encouraging. So you know, from a CVC perspective, we're, we're delighted to have started in 2017 we want to continue investing 
in the country and, and supporting uh, the best companies to grow, both locally and internationally. Very good. That's very, very interesting, your, uh, your view. Uh, as an international investor that has done complete, uh, repeatedly a number of investments the last few years and the one perhaps uh, to be concluded uh, fairly soon. Now I would like to ask uh, Mr. Andriopoulos, uh, the founder and CEO of Demand, one of the perhaps the most uh, active real estate development in Greece the last few years, uh, that also has a strategic alliance, a strategic cooperation with a multilateral bank like uh, BRD, but also a cooperation with a private equity hedge fund HIG. So, Mr. Andriopoulos, I would like to ask you, what's your experience from uh, striking these strategic agreements, strategic alignments in the field that you are very active? Uh, what's the experience you have ga uh, gathered from, from that uh, cooperation? And how do you view uh, possible future cooperation of international uh, institution and Greek uh, players? Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, Alexi, thank you very much for the invitation. As you very well know, and everybody understands, the last uh, 12 years, uh, we execute projects in a very difficult environment, starting with the Greek crisis back in 2010, and previously the Lehman crisis, and then the turbulence between 2015 and 2019. So for us, the last uh, year and a half, since uh, July last year, is maybe the easiest and best period in our business life the last 12 years. Because we have a very friendly environment. We have a government which is supporting uh, investment. And uh, the only, let's say, risk which remains and is not going to be easy to be resolved, is the geopolitical risk of the country, which is always, of course, assessed from our investors. Now, it was our choice to create a JV company with the BRD back in December 2017, and also work with HIG. And I can say only positive uh, things about uh, both uh, collaborations. Um, so, besides the, the obvious, which is extra visibility uh, for us as a Greek company, and also access to um, uh, equity and uh, cheaper funding, they gave us extra knowledge and methodology to approach at the same time a bigger number of projects. And this is a reason why demand right now is executing uh, 10 concurrent projects. And at the same time, we are preparing right now for the next five years, another six projects. So the experience is very positive. Uh, I, I should say also that uh, the Greek real estate environment uh, for the next 10 years is going always to be growing. Uh, there is no uh, room uh, for new investors. Uh, as an example, you can see the Elinicon project, which is about to start. And also with the pandemic and the opportunities, uh, 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 which is creating internationally, I think Greece can become a, a place for Europeans uh, to live, work, and stay for longer time. Thank you very much, Dimitris. I would like now to ask uh, Mr. Patelis, uh, which are the most important achievements in attractive new investors in Greece and increasing the, uh, the number of FDIs in the country over the last couple of years, if you can uh, name a few? So, uh, I don't always like uh, talking about uh, things that went well, but in any case, um, obviously, uh, we had, there have been some pivotal uh, investment moments um, over the past year or so. Uh, the first one came from Pfizer, the uh, uh, drug multinational that uh, is opening up its digital hub in Thessaloniki, the second city uh, in Greece. And there the original plan was to attract about 200 professionals to be based out of Thessaloniki. It's only one of six digital hubs that um, Pfizer is running around the world. 
Uh, what is interesting is that what the company discovered in the process is that the pool, the talent um, that uh, they could attract was of such high caliber that they're now uh, upping the number of people that will be working out of the hub and they're going to be 500 professionals instead of 200. Uh, of course, Microsoft was another very big uh, uh, moment. Uh, Greece became only the 28th country in the world to uh, uh, be to host a, a Microsoft data region. It will be three data centers in Attica, and this is going to be built over the next two to three years, the uh, only country in Southeast Europe. And I think what was interesting in that investment uh, further to the uh, digital aspect and the technology aspect of it was that Microsoft uh, selected Greece for its political stability um, and because of the uh, confidence and trust it had. And so that gives very important signal for elsewhere. I would also highlight um, also to keep within the theme of, uh, of the group here that the uh, reduction uh, in the legacy NPEs um, with the Greek banking system has come through a vote of confidence of a variety of international players. And this is ongoing. The first uh, wave of the pandemic hit just as Eurobank was about to complete its transaction. And for a moment, um, there was talk of whether that would go through. That went through uh, nicely. And then in the second wave, we had Alpha Bank um, that um, uh, faced a similar issue, but uh, received three very good, uh, sorry, two very good bids by international investors. So uh, we look forward also to the plans outlined by uh, uh, CEO Megalu for uh, Preos Bank. And uh, we strongly believe 21 will be a transformational uh, year for the uh, Greek banking system. But I would also add that there's a lot of small uh, things that happen that are equally important sometimes to the large deals. And probably during the pandemic, the most significant shift has been that we have seen people select Greece as a country to quote unquote, ride out the pandemic. And that is uh, certainly a change to the past that Greece would be seen uh, as a, a source of safety as opposed to as a source of risk. Um, and these small decisions that people make, uh, by whether Greek or not, uh, are very significant for the long-term health of the country. And I would echo what Mr. Andreopoulos uh, said earlier, that um, there are also enormous opportunities uh, in real estate as Greece um, repositions itself in the international uh, market as a place that's uh, great to live in, as we all knew, but now it's going to be a great place to work uh, from as well. Thank you very much. Your view is very, uh, very interesting. Uh, I would like now to ask uh, Mr. Mehalu uh, how the Greek banking system and in Piraeus Bank in particular is expected to support investment in Greece and in particular in also in which specific se sectors you anticipate that there will be increased interest? We cannot, uh, Mr. Megalo, we cannot hear you. Let's talk about uh, the uh, sectors. Uh, and, and, and talk about which sectors we think that uh, they will be attracting the interest. There is no doubt that um, uh, the green economy, energy transition, the digital transformation of the service sector and the public administration, upgrading of agricultural production and industry, and the technological economy will play a very big role in attracting uh, investments in the new reality. What do banks do? Uh, they provide advice and they provide financing tools and they facilitate uh, the capital uh, uh, to come into the country. And uh, these are all important tools to adapt to a new sustainable growth model, which uh, will boost the competitiveness of the Greek companies, will reduce their operating costs and uh, help them enter into innovative sectors. Uh, by financing, we help a lot the growth of this, of this economy, which is vital. And I will reiterate uh, the number that, uh, uh, you know, as I raised, Bank, we're very proud of uh, achieving this year already. As I said, we had the target of 5 billion new lending for this year. We are already at 5.4 billion and we see ourselves going uh, 
towards the six mark with uh, mark with velocity. In terms of uh, of uh, sectors, uh, energy is going to be important. The plant uh, decarbonization by 2028 uh, and uh, and, uh, and uh, the phasing of the lignite uh, power is going to be extremely important. We expect nine billion of investments in renewable energy sources, and this is installed capacity of uh, around 9 gigawatts from 10 gigawatts that we are right now. We are very big in renewable energy financing and will continue to do so, uh, uh, having financed about 1.4 billion euros in uh, renewable energy. Infrastructure projects, Projects extremely important as well. The real estate that we talked about, and uh, 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 you know, the the Alinicon project is uh, is a characteristic of uh, of of that. And of course, the upgrade that is expected uh, to come with the agri business and agri industry, where you know th there is a lot of potential, particularly in northern Greece. Where again, as a bank, we are uh, extremely important. Advice, financing, capital, and facilitating the funds that will be coming through the next generation EU are going to be very important uh, uh, tasks that the banks have to do in order to facilitate investment in the country. Thank you, Christos. I would like now to go back to Mr. Fotakidis. Uh, Mr. Fotakidis, apart from the three sectors that you have already invested, uh, only yesterday evening you uh, actually, uh, MIG announced that uh, it has uh, approved uh, on a board level the potential acquisition of, uh, uh, of Ivartia by your fund. So we would like to hear, you know, what's the key sectors that you are looking uh, and what's the key investment criteria? Thanks, Alex. Look, CBC is um, the generalist fund, and so we look at most sectors. Uh, but the ones I would say that focusing maybe on the top seven or eight, uh, they would be healthcare, financial services, tech, consumer, uh, and food, pharma, hospitality. Uh, those would be the those would be the, the key key ones. And I was pleased to hear some of the feedback there from Mr. Magalu because. A significant part of the operations in Vivartia is in northern Greece, both on the dairy side and on the frozen side. And actually, one of our initiatives is how to help uh, those businesses there grow, particularly in, uh, in, um, in innovative products, focusing on organic, for example, or biological, as we call it here in, in Greece, or bio, um, and it's an important area of growth uh, for the business. And actually, I should have mentioned earlier, I myself have moved to Athens now, so hopefully a live example of what we're talking about. Uh, after 25 years uh, living and working in London, um, having now made uh, some initial investments, I've decided to, to uh, focus on Greece and, uh, and, and I'll be here full time uh, representing CDC, um, which is exciting. I think, um, importantly, um, from, a, from, a, from, a, from a sector perspective, there are a number of sectors uh, which are a billion plus in, in value, and, and those sectors should attract international investors. I mean, taking a look at, for example, at insurance. Insurance is a four and a half billion gross written premium sector in Greece. We're, we're in, um, in final discussions on, on the leading uh, company in, in the sector. I can't say much more than that right now. Hopefully, we can conclude a transaction. But again, that's an interesting sector where an institutional investor such as CBC can come in help the company grow, potentially consolidate uh, the, the sector. There are more than 70 insurance companies in that sector. I think it's, a, it's an interesting uh, area and something that we will focus on in uh, 2021. More generally, uh, what's good about uh, what I would say in speaking for, for private equity um, as, a, as a market, you know, we have, we have matured as investors. And I think ultimately, you know, we're not looking at coming in and, and flipping assets, as it were. Uh, our focus is on investing five to seven years. Indeed, the average hold of our investments is 6.7 years, and really we're focused on, on building 
better businesses. We look, we look for market leaders, normally top one, two or three players, strong management teams, and with a vision to grow either organically or, uh, and or inorganically. And also our funds are, are changing uh, to adapt uh, to, to a broader investing environment. At CVC, we have the flagship private equity fund, which currently is 16 billion euro, and is the, is the fund that signed the transaction last night for, for Vivartia. Uh, but also we have a growth fund, which is focused on technology-enabled business services. And we'll look at smaller, high-growth tech businesses that, uh, that, that exist in Greece. And finally, we have a strategic opportunities platform, and this is typically for infra and quasi-infra investments, can hold investments for 8 to 15 years. And certainly one area, again, tying into some of the comments on the panel, uh, one area we're going to focus on from that fund is the, is the uh, renewable energy space, because I do think there is a huge opportunity there as well. Thank you, Alex. I would now like to go back to Mr. Andriopoulos. Uh, Dimitri, I would like, from your experience and uh, your involvement in a public infrastructure project and regeneration project, uh, also in the Paris Sport and elsewhere, uh, to tell us what your view about the Next Generation Recovery Fund, how it can support and how it can better exploit, you know, infrastructure investments and redevelopment in urban areas such as Votanikos, perhaps, that has been recently announced or the Olympic uh, Stadium of Attic Athens? Um, so, uh, first of all, complementary to what Mr. Patel said about Pfizer and uh, Microsoft investments, I want to give you also another example about uh, the, the opportunities we have in this country. In 2017, in the country was only one international call center operator called Teleperformance with 2,000 employees. Uh, today, we have seven international companies operating call centers based in Greece. They employ approximately 14,000 employees and 70% of them are foreigners. You can imagine the the uh, the the influence they have in the local economies because all these people, they work in Athens, Thessaloniki, Hania, Patras, and elsewhere, Ioannina as well. They rent houses, they spend money, they go to vacation, and it is extremely interesting to understand that people between 22 and 36 uh, they choose Greece as the, as the place to work. So not, it's not only, you know, the mega projects like Microsoft in the future, maybe Amazon or Tesla or, 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 or other investments. Uh, we have opportunities in sectors uh, which uh, are not maybe uh, very attractive as names or activities, but they have extremely high add-on value in the economy. And uh, you, as I said before, the next sector which is going to give us um, a lot of benefits is uh, housing for Europeans, is what I call the future of offices when they ask me, is, is a new product which I call in Greek graphiospita. We have to redesign the office space for the future and our living space. And maybe for a number of, uh, of employees, we have to design what is called, you know, work and live at the same place. So uh, going back to what you asked me, uh, Alexi, uh, I believe that if we use, and we are going to use correctly, the funds of the recovery fund, uh, because our cities, and most of, uh, of them are old cities, we have a huge opportunity in what we call city regeneration projects, because the state is going to invest by using the recovery funds in the public infrastructure and the public space, creating you know, uh, easy access, green areas, parks, and stuff like that. And the multiplier 
is going to be huge because the, 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 the private investments in those areas are going to be between four and six times bigger than the state investments. So areas like uh, Agios Dionysians in Piraeus, which is not theory, we did it, and very successfully, areas like the Piraeus Tower, Botanikos, uh, the Patras uh, port, the west uh, entrance of Thessaloniki city, and so on and so on, are going to change the real, the real estate landscape and the cities itself. Um. Thank you, Dimitris. Very interesting your remarks, especially on some uh, hidden uh, projects and successes that has been uh, uh, completed uh, during the last few years. Uh, I would like now to ask uh, again Mr. Patelis, uh, what is the plan, the development model that the Greek government would like to implement? Uh, we already see some uh, positive reaction from the market. We, we, we hear the view of uh, CVC and, uh, and of uh, demand that uh, um, using uh, all this experience, you know, invites uh, and cooperate with uh, uh, tenants for, for your new development. What's the view of the government? What do you plan to do? What's the, the new development model that you intend to uh, apply for the, uh, for the next uh, generation fund? And more so for, the, uh, increasing, increasing, for increasing the attractiveness of the Greek economy for foreign investors. Thank you very much for your question. Obviously, this is a very difficult question to answer in two, three minutes. And um, um, obviously, our main objective is to attract um, outside investment, to plug the investment gap that uh, you showed at the beginning of your slides. This cannot be plugged in solely from domestic savings because uh, we do not have a high enough savings rate in Greece, so it has to come from abroad. This means that you have to uh, reform the economy to make it more competitive. And this is an ongoing process that will uh, continue to unfold. Um, of course, the, uh, our times call also for digitization. This was true before the pandemic. It's even more true now. Uh, the RRF, the Recovering Resilience uh, Plan of Greece, um, has a very heavy green focus, understandably, 37%. Um, this is another challenge of our age, climate uh, change. Um, but And of course, um, the government was elected on a platform of uh, reducing the burden of taxation. And I would highlight that further to reducing uh, corporate taxes, uh, we have now also uh, done a significant uh, reduction uh, in the taxes on salaried employment, including four percentage point reduction in social security taxes and elimination of the solidarity um, income tax. But I would say that the big opportunity that lies ahead of us um, in Greece is to take advantage of our comparative advantage, which is naturally the uh, natural beauty of the country, the fact that it's located um, where it is, so it's sun, uh, beaches, uh, uh, mountains, and the way of life, and to try to marry that together and uh, with uh, uh, better technology, cutting edge t technology, uh, with more reforms, um, in order and lower taxes in order to attract uh, a greater share of the pie. The pandemic is opening tremendous opportunities. Technology has uncovered the ability of people and companies uh, to, to a degree to choose where they locate themselves from. And so Greece wants to be part of this uh, and will be part of this uh, new uh, post-pandemic era. And we continue to invite uh, foreign companies and investors uh, to come to Greece. Thank you very much. Uh, 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 I would like now to ask uh, Mr. Megalou, uh, what's your view, what's the view of the banks about the, the new generation fund and how the banks w believe that they will uh, interlink their operation with, uh, with this uh, uh, significant opportunity, the new f uh, the funds that would be made available for the country? Uh, thank you, Alexis. Uh, I just wanted uh, to point out that, uh, uh, you know, the, the role of the banks in uh, actually disseminating uh, the next generation EU fund into the market, the Greek market is going to be uh, uh, very important. First of all, we can bridge uh, finance, uh, given uh, the, the, the delays that we understand that may be coming in 2021, the banks will be here to bridge finance and front load any of uh, uh, 
uh, the financing that uh, may be required. That's, that's quite important. Second, we will co-finance. As you know, most of the uh, financing will come for uh, uh, the sectors that are a part of the next generation EU uh, by uh, the 50% by the, the fund, uh, 20% by financing of the banks and uh, 30% by own participation. That's also a very important part. But where I see also the banks playing a, a very big role, and I would like also to put forward the, the role uh, for Pareus Bank, is to act as an agent for the risk management and risk assessment of the projects. As you know, these projects uh, will be uh, having a lot of, uh, uh, will be based on KPIs. And in order to go to the next stage, you have to, to have uh, fulfilled a number of KPIs in the previous and so on. And the banks, uh, with their uh, credit and risk management knowledge, they will be uh, the best uh, medium to disseminate a lot of these uh, uh, funds and activate the funds going forward. It is very important to know that we have the next generation uh, EU that uh, uh, is about 32 billion, 20 billion that are coming from the National Strategic Reference Framework, the ESPA. The Common Agricultural Policy is about 19 billion, and we have another 10 billion from the National Development Program, a total of 80 billion, which are going to be deployed over the next seven years, and we estimate this will impact the GDP of the country one and a half to two percent per year, upgrading it from uh, normality. So quite a lot of work to do and uh, the banks are pretty ready to start uh, disseminating this as the funds will be coming through to the Greek economy. Thank you very much, Christos. I think we have time for just another uh, short question. Uh, I'm tempted just to ask uh, Mr. Andriopoulos, Dimitri, uh, we have seen a, a bit of a slowdown in uh, real estate transaction the last few months. There have been so many transactions uh, in 2019 and the uh, first month uh, of 2020, uh, and we have seen a bit of a slowdown. Uh, that does not mean, of course, that uh, we don't see uh, new buildings uh, uh, being built, uh, but more so the transaction. What's your view? When we expect we shall expect to see a reversal of this trend? To be honest with you, I don't see any slowdown. What I see is a lot of money out there waiting for projects. So the responsibility is back to us, Greek entrepreneurs, to create ideas, vision, and projects, and the money is there. So, I mean, I don't see any slowdown. On the contrary, and uh, I mean, being with the pandemic the last nine months, I see a lot of activity in the hospitality sector, which is strange enough, but you know, people are going to go back to the vacation in 2021, 22, 23, and I see a lot of uh, movement there and activity. I see a huge activity in logistics because retail is moving from the physical stores uh, to the logistics, a, a lot of uh, demand for technology infrastructure, like data centers and so on and so on, is not only Microsoft, which is going to uh, build data centers in Greece. I mean, uh, the international community is going to follow, and we have already requests about data centers from other operators. I see a lot of demand for new office buildings, environmentally friendly, low cost, zero emissions, uh, independent energy producing, and so on and so on. So, I mean, our data is not a feeling, I'm talking about facts, is the, the extreme opposite. That's very good news and very positive sign. 
Uh, I would like just to make a quick conclusion of, uh, of this discussion. Uh, understand that uh, foreign direct investment but also fixed capital investment are expected to increase the next few years on the back of uh, structural reforms, uh, including lower tax rate, uh, lower uh, and decreased reduction of the indirect employment cost. Uh, higher liquidity from the banking sector, but also from the regeneration, uh, next generation EU fund. Um, so overall, we see uh, some po very positive sign despite the, uh, the late part of the pandemic that we are currently facing. I would like to thank you all for your time and for your participation. It was very interesting and thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.